folks. Thought we'd have a look at posts and particularly this age old question of how is a spit formed? And in the classroom, this one either makes you or breaks you. <laughs> you get those blank looks or somebody who knows exactly what it is. First of all, can we please remember this isn't an erosional landform. This is a depositional landform. Okay, it's one that is created by the sea, but not through erosion. Okay, so if we just start by just drawing our coastline, remember it needs to have a change in the shape of the land. Okay, we'll just go over here. There we go. So what dictates what happens on our shores to start with is the wind direction. Now, as we know in the UK, the wind comes from the southwest. This is what we call the prevailing wind. It's the one that happens most of the time in our, um, due to the global air circulation model where most of our weather comes from. Now this southwest prevailing wind causes something called swash to happen on our shores and then a resulting backwash. Swash and backwash. Swash and backwash. Okay, swash is um, the one that's going at an angle to the beach and backwash is it coming back down straight due to gravity. Okay, so I'm just going to write that on. Swash and backwash. Okay. Now I want you to imagine a small piece of sediment, like a pebble, okay, making its way along the beach with the waves and with gravity coming back down the shore, okay, all the way along. And its journey means that it's moving in this direction. And this process of that piece of sediment moving with swash and backwash is what we call Longshore drift. So longshore drift isn't a fixed thing, it's a dynamic process, it's a process where sediment is moved along the shore in the direction of the prevailing wind. Now this would happen all day long if it wasn't for this. Okay, this is important. This is what we call a change in the shape of the land. Okay. Now normally this could be for instance a river okay, or an estuary. But what happens is our swash keeps going, backwash keeps going, swash keeps going and then it gets interesting because the lands change shape. And what happens is We've got our movement of sediment this way, we've got our movement of water commit perhaps going in and out due to this. Imagine a bit of a river mouth here. Could have drawn that on a bit better, sorry. So we've got some, you know, some movement of, of water in and out this way. It creates a sort of low energy zone, okay, where there's less impactful swash and backwash happening. So what we start to see is deposition, okay, just put that word there, which is the depositing, deposition, uh, the depositing of material here, basically. Now, over lots and lots of time, a shape will sort of form, okay, and it will often have, and I'll come back to this in a minute, but a curved end. Okay, and it's sort of, it'll sort of roughly be this shape. Okay, and there'll be lots and lots of pebbles or shingle. Um, and it's quite, can be quite a big bank actually, visible all of the time. If you think, for example, um, East Head Spit, which you can take the dog for a walk, um, or go sand dune surfing like my kids do. Now, behind the spit, We've got the waves, remember, here. So look a bit like seagulls, don't they? It's making them a bit bigger. There we go. Uh, we've got the waves here. We've got the full impact of the sea. Just in case you're in any confusion, let's just write land up there. So we've got the sea, we've got the land, we've got the waves, 
yeah? And here we've got our spit. This is the spit itself, okay? Now behind the spit, yes, we've got the river water moving up and down, but we've got this sort of low energy zone where the waves can't quite reach it. It's still tidal, okay, because this is the land here. So it's still flooding with the sea, but at low tide, it might be um, perhaps visible. And what you see then is actually a bit of a salt marsh appearing. Now, if anyone's not sure what a salt marsh is and you haven't been to East Head, it's, it looks fairly muddy, um, clay almost, with small reeds and grasses growing in there and often lots and lots of wading birds. I'll try and draw a bird for you. Um, not too shabby. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of wading birds basically eating small insects and grubs and stuff in the mud. Now this is a low energy, as we said, intertidal zone with quite a lot of deposition. So I think we need to put perhaps just an arrow. Let's have a big arrow. Low energy intertidal, which just means it has tides. Okay, coming in and out intertidal zone with high deposition. And what, I know you're going to ask me, why does it have this sort of curved end? And that's called a recurved end. And that's because out here, remember, we've got the sea, we've got the tides, we've got the wind. It could be for two different reasons. Okay, the first ring is it could be due to winds. Winds shape sand dunes, and particularly sand dunes, but they can shape ones of bigger sediment as well. Uh, so it could be due to winds or wind direction. Uh, the other thing, wind direction. The other thing is tides and waves. Okay. Now a spit isn't so large that it will reach the other side of the bay. For example, if we imagine this land just keeps on going, um, it's not going to reach the other side of the bay because it's going to stick out and stop. Okay. But if it did continue, if it went all the way, I wonder if I could just draw this on here. Bit ad hoc. There we go. If we had one that went all the way across, okay, then that would be called a bar. And your example of the bar would be Chesil, Chesil Beach over in Weymouth. Okay, now the processes for this are exactly the same. All right, that's um, no different. You know, we're still talking about longshore drift, we're still talking about swash and backwash, we're still talking about deposition. Okay, so there you have it. Just one thing left to add, I think. It's never really the sea, is it, without a small boat? And it's not really the land without a house. Okay. Excellent. So there you go. That's your infographic for how is a spit formed.